Something about this green that has made the brand really super activated. When you visit the website, the one thing that happens like there is a loader of the wings just coming in, the Aston Martin logo type coming in, and it looks so fresh. What's up you guys? Uh, how have you been guys? It's been quite a while so I decided to pause with you for some good reason. We'll get into that after reviewing this Aston Martin logo. Yeah so first things first, one of the things that is super noticeable and uh, I mean you don't need to be a designer to see this uh, you know design decision they made. Uh, they decided to uh, do away with the gradient and introduce a solid green. I mean, like you could look at this green as a blue stone green. It has that really, really nice touch. Uh, it, it's somewhat like really, really uh, a unique green. And I feel like I love the approach here. I love what they're doing with the green. I mean, like who doesn't know that gradients are really outdated. Having a gradient in a logo is one of those things that show that you're still stuck in, uh, in the past. Something about this green that has made the brand really super activated. When you visit the website, the one thing that happens like there is a loader of the wings just coming in, the Aston Martin logo type coming in, and it looks so fresh. Like the way it transitioned back to that like, uh, you know, luxurious look of black and, you know, all the black and white. I feel like that green now is having a really good touch in terms of how it's being embedded in the identity. That loader on the website, spot on. One of the other noticeable change, I bet you guys already saw this, it's the type you know, the type ended up becoming a bit bold. Uh, I would say it's still a sun serve because when you look at the, what they're doing here, it's just like maybe instead of going regular, they're trying to just put on more weight on the logo type, which is quite actually smart. We'll get into why this is a good decision after talking about like other changes that are going on in this new logo unit. So for those of you guys who know me, I always preach and tell you that the best thing to do when you're designing a logo is to be taking away elements of the logo. So I think this new rebrand embraces that. When you look at the decision they did is to lose that semicircle. I would refer to it as like the wing joint. The thing in the middle is gone completely, which makes the logo really feel so fresh and neat. And I love this design decision. When I think about the designer behind this, I already know that this, this was gonna happen. Because when you look at Peter Saville and his approach to design, is well known for, or well popular for designing uh, you know, the, I think he had a project in the past where he worked on, uh, you know, the England home jersey. So it's one of those design decisions that he made early on that has been inspiration for, uh, you know, the England team from day one, you know, like all the way back when he collaborated with Ambro on this design. So I expected to see some of this like design touch where everything is at least a bit minimal. So losing that same circle, that could really speak to his design style. And I bet 100% this works. I bet this is a good design decision. So one of the other things that is quite noticeable is, uh, you know, the strokes. When you look at the wing strokes, uh, these strokes are putting on more weight. They are becoming a bit beefed, but I think for a good reason. Like when you look at the application, most of this logo, we all know it from the bonnet. Sometimes when the strokes are a bit too small or too of a lighter weight, it becomes so hard for it to be eligible like from distance like all that design touch get lost but like i think having these a bit uh you know putting on more weight on these strokes has helped a bit now um looking at uh, the first project they pushed out where they went to uh, a blacksmith and they redesigned this entire thing uh, from scratch i enjoyed the process of like watching these videos when they're working on a metallic version of the badge one of the things that i wanted to point out when you relate to uh, the typography getting uh, you know more weight and then the wing strokes are getting more weight i think it's one of the, the synergy of trying to make this uh, you know badge on the bonnet eligible so i think this this is one of like the pitfalls they had in the past and you know the best way to fix it is to give it more weight so that it's more really outstanding and uh, a bit like really really visible uh, one of the other things that i noticed uh, is when you look at the proportion of the logo you know the proportion of the logo is quite the same but the most interesting thing when you look at that you know rectangle that encapsulates the logo type i think this has become a bit more bigger after doing like some really good thorough research that's what i managed to really notice on the new logo so 
everything looks for me fresh. I would say like this idea of trying to rebrand to tap into the, the current generations, it's quite like really becoming a thing. We see brands actually looking the same nowadays, which is fascinating. But like seeing a brand like, uh, you know, Aston Martin, like really thinking tries to either just like revamping their old identity. And I'll tell you like, Aston Martin is one of those brands uh, like I've talked about in the past that really, really value design. Because when you look at the iterations, they have managed to go in close to what, like 10 decades of them being in the industry. They have had only eight iterations, I think also considering this one. So it means a lot. It's like one of those Coca-Cola brands that really, really value their identity more than anything. So they cannot just scrap and try to look like everyone else. So I think mysteriously, like every brand should at least understand this, where we, you know, you might want to tap into the, the new generation, but like, you, you just don't look the same, you know? Like, it just don't make sense when you just decide to like, yo, let, let's have what, uh, you know, uh, those guys did. Let, let's just have that for our logo. Like, I think that's not the way. You can still revamp and, you know, redesign the logo with still, you know, maintaining the, the heritage and all, you know, the things you built from the past. So this is quite like a good idea. Like, I think this is really spot on. And, and man, like, who doesn't love Peter Seville? Like, he's one of those best guys, or oh, the living legends we still have. Anyways, let's dive into a bit of updates. Why I've been away for all this long. Most of you guys have been sending me some DMs asking me why, um, you know, why I disappeared. So let's dive into that. If you remember this video, then you remember I made some sort of announcement that I will be putting together a modern design program. And the idea I had for this program is to try focus on the skills designers need. I wasn't intending to teach you how to use Illustrator. I wasn't intending to you know teach you how to use uh, you know Photoshop or uh, Figma or Webflow. But my goal was to really bring you back home and remind you the skills that are really important in a modern day where uh, machine learning is quite taking over. One of the skills I pulled out in so many other skills like a designer needs in the modern time, that skill was sketching. And honestly, I didn't know how best I was gonna put together this course, but my intentions was to try really force it and try figure out best ways of teaching this uh, to everyone out there. So I think it has taken me two years. Honestly, it's been a crazy you know, grind of trying to research, reading books, I mean, I'll tell you like there's no one book I've not read about design or even logo design. Like I've read every material out there, but the goal was to try to figure out like a best approach of how to teach someone how to sketch. Because we all know that we hate sketching. We all know that sketching comes off a bit as an artistic skill if you've spent some good time on Instagram and you've seen artists like James, uh, that, that guy who sketches logos. So it's quite intimidating. And it was quite hard for me to pull off. Uh, so I failed completely. It has taken me two years to this point. I think that's when I managed to get a grip on it. So the course I managed to put together is gonna show you how you can really leverage your sketching skills. If you don't have any sketching skills, I mean, this course is gonna help you really improve those sketching skills and just unpack the hidden skill in you. So I'll tell you for a fact, like there is no one industry where sketching is not needed. Like we've seen like the guys who design for Dio, the guys who design for Gucci, the guys who design for, uh, you know, Aston Martin, like all these guys, the first thing they think about is like getting a pencil and paper and then rough out their ideas. So these are the skills I'm going to teach you in the first chapters of the course. I'm going to teach you how to sketch, how to think like, you know, like a designer. Like if you're a non-designer, you have no background in design. This course is well structured for you. And right now I'm excited to announce that the course is currently running on pre-order. So what's going to happen if you're interested in taking this course right now, it's on pre-order. So I want you to come and support. That's I'll, I'll just say, it. like, I want you guys to support and show me that this is some material that you would be interested in, you know, uh, you know, I mean, like enrolling in. So the idea is for you to pre-order right now. So the pre-order is going to run all the way to the 26th of August. And it's that date that the first chapter is going to really uh, drop. So when you pre-order, it means quite a lot. There are quite so many benefits. Of course, uh, when the course launches, which is next year, that is February 1st, that's when the public launch would happen. But like when you pre-order, you're going to get early access. So when you get all access, what it means, uh, I'm going to be dropping chapters every other two weeks. So the first chapter drops on the 26th of August. Then after that, you know, every after two weeks, I'll be dropping another chapter. 
But honestly, that's why I decided to pause YouTube. I made a promise to myself that if I don't launch this course, I will never do a YouTube video. So, I mean, like, there's no way I will never make a YouTube video. That's why I managed to, you know, launch the course really that, uh, that fast, a course that has taken me two years. I'll catch you in the next one. I'll come with more updates progressively. But yeah, it's been quite exciting to be back and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I figured I shouldn't just come and do a live update. I should just dive into what I love to do best. That's reviewing logos, designing logos. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. I can't believe that this is my first YouTube video over like what? Like two months. It's been crazy, but I'm happy that we're back. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.